Hello everyone, this is Desh Ramna, working as assistant professor in EC department from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Our today's experiment is a stable multivibrator. A stable multivibrator is free running oscillator. So we'll see the output waveforms across the um, uh, collector of the transistor Q1 and uh, output across the capacitor. A stable multivibrator. This is a, a stable multivibrator circuit. So a stable multivibrator are free running oscillator which oscillate between two, uh, two states continuously producing a square wave output. Regenerative switching circuits such as a stable multivibrator are most commonly used type of relaxation oscillator because not only they are simple, reliable and easy of construction. So this is an S stable which is a free running oscillator. So we need to design uh, we need to design an S stable multivibrator which is a regenerative circuit where you have two, uh, Q1 transistor and Q2 transistor which are connected in the cross couple. Here we are not applying any input voltage. It is a free running oscillator without applying any input voltage. You are getting an output as a square wave. So with the uh, how this square wave output uh, we will uh, observe the output waveforms for the circuit which is connected as well as we'll observe the output uh, across the capacitor that is nothing but the collector output uh, for Q1 transistor as well as Q2 transistor. So output is taken across a capacitor across a Q2 uh, transistor as the uh, theory uh, point of view we are taking Q2 transistor as an on condition and Q1 transistor as an off condition so we are taking output across Q2. We can also take output across Q1 uh, that also uh, uh, because the transistor will be on and off uh, for a continuous uh, uh, no, for continuous changes, uh, if one transistor is on, Q1 transistor is on, another uh, transistor Q2 will be off. When Q, uh, Q1 will be uh, in off condition, Q2 will be on uh, on condition. Like that, we'll generate a regenerative output that is nothing but a square wave. So this is an output square wave which is generated across the output of the uh, collector as well as the emitter or across a Q1 transistor as well as Q2 transistor. So this is the output voltage. This is the output voltage for Q's uh, collector of Q1 transistor. Here if you see, if whenever the transistor output is low, the uh, transistor that is nothing but uh, uh, Q, uh, Q1 transistor will be in off condition. When Q1 transistor is in uh, on uh, off condition, Q2 transistor will be in on condition like that. The output waveform will be generated where that output voltage we are taking across the collector that is nothing but the, if you are taking output across the collector VC1. Uh, if you are taking output across the uh, uh, Q2 transistor VC2. So if you, you can see here, uh, the output will start from the saturation voltage, that is nothing but VC saturation voltage. From there, uh, the output will move to the on as well as off. So at this condition, when Q1 is in on condition and Q2 is in off condition, you can see the output will be low for VC1. As well as if you see output of VC2, output will be in on condition. Similarly, for the next case, if Q1 is in off condition, here Q2 will be in on condition. As similarly, at the same point, if you see the VC2 output, the output will be low. So, you know, uh, whenever the transistor is in on condition, output will be low. So, here in the VC1, Q1 transistor output is uh, Q1 is on. So, what will be the output? Output will be low. Here, when uh, now VC2, the transistor Q2 is in off condition. Off condition means output will be high. Like that, the next condition also. Now, Q1 will be in off condition. When Q1 is, when transistor is in off condition, that is nothing but open circuit will get output that is nothing but VCC that is high. Simultaneously, when Q2 is in on condition, output will be uh, 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 output will be low because the Q, uh, Q2 is in on condition. Like that the transistor Q1 and Q2 will change, uh, will make an on and off condition. A corresponding uh, VC1 and VC2 are no down. We are uh, no down in the um, output across the collectors for uh, two transistors. So this is the actual output we need to uh, check uh, and uh, 
we are the calculation the observations are these are the frequency of oscillations observation table we need to find here whenever the transistor is in uh, q1 is in on condition and when transistor q2 is in off condition what will be the time period t1 is equal to 0.69 r1 c1 right similarly here whenever the transistor will be off what will be uh, uh, then uh, q2 will be in on condition so the time period t2 will be indicated as 0.69 r2 c2 so overall time period t is equal to t1 plus t2 so here you can write 0.69 times of r1 c1 plus r2 c2 if the values of r1 and c uh, r1 and r2 is equal to r c1 and c2 is equal to c then the frequency uh, then uh, uh, the frequency of the square wave you can write f is equal to 1 by t where t is equal to 0.38 r into c so r and c are the resistors which we are uh, keeping in our circuit so you can take the value you and you can substitute in these and you can uh, get the frequency and time periods for the output square wave which is generated and also we need to observe the output across the capacitor so now let us go for the connections so this is a circuit so now let us uh, go for the connection so here we are connecting uh, we are taking a transistor here you can see Uh, then where the notch is there emitter base and collector here we are connecting a capacitor to the collector end here uh, from the collector end we are connecting uh, a capacitor so the other end of the capacitor should be connected to the base of the next transistor so we are connecting a collector end and the uh, uh, the collector of the um, the capacitor uh, collector of uh, one end of the transistor is connected to the capacitor and the capacitor other end should be connected to the base and next we have at the collector point we have two uh, resistors uh, at this end which are connected to vcc which is of 2.2 kilo ohms so from the uh, capacitor end we are connecting So okay, pass to this. You are taking as VCC end. So this we are taking as VCC end, and from capacitor other end we are connecting another resistor which is connected to the VCC. So capacitor other end should be connected to the VCC. right and this point should be connected to the base of this and this point which should be connected to the base of this end so we can connect a um, vcc from this circuit we can connect vcc from this circuit this is a common vcc which we are taking here so this line uh, Uh, this overall line will be indicated as vcc and this should be connected to the ground and uh, this base should be connected to the uh, transistor of this end and this base should be connected to the um, transistor of capacitor other end
So uh, we have connected all the transistors. Uh, one end is connected to the capacitor, capacitor other end is connected to the base of this transistor and for uh, transistor Q2, uh, one end is connected to the capacitor that is nothing but the collector end, collector end other end is connected to the base. And uh, these uh, collector resistors and collector resistance and from the capacitor other end the two resistors which we are connecting those are connected to the common VCC point. And now you can uh, uh, there is no need to apply any input for this stable multivibrator directly output you can check across the collector and we need to make the common emitters these are the emitter points where these emitter points are made as a common and which is connected to the ground. These are the emitter ends which are made common and this common end this common end the emitters are common and that end is given to the ground and now we can uh, connect the oscilloscope that is nothing but you can go for uh, uh, channel A channel A and channel B where you can connect uh, uh, channel A um, that is nothing but uh, uh, blue color you can uh, connect to the collector of the transistor of any transistor and this is nothing but the output across the capacitor. So here we are connecting yellow uh, we are connecting the blue color to the output of uh, across the collector that is nothing but the capacitor you can go for any transistor in um, uh, collector in whether a q1 or q2 and this is nothing but we are observing the output across the capacitor across the capacitor which is connected right and common should be grounded common end the black end should be grounded so this is the connection so you can uh, check the output now so this is the connection we have made so we uh, we are taking uh, the output and uh, one output we are taking across uh, the collector end so now uh, you can execute it so now if you check this is the actual output which you are getting this is the stable multi vibrator output where on and off so when this transistor at this end q1 will be on and q2 will be off at this end q1 will be off and q2 will be on so like this we'll get a square wave across the output of the uh, stable multi vibrator if you need to uh, if you need to check why because depending upon the charging and discharging of the capacitor only the outputs will be on and off so you can go for output across the capacitor that is uh, i've connected a channel 2 where output across the capacitor and this channel 1 for output so these are the two outputs one output across the collector another output across the capacitor where uh, the capacitor will start charging at that end the output will be low when the capacitor uh, is uh, remain constant like steady state at that point the output will be equal to high so uh, the negative minus v set and when it reaches the plus v set depending upon the capacitor charging and discharging only you can get the output a square wave for an stable multi vibrator so in order to calculate this is the output this is the uh, exact output you can go for this is the an output and this is the output across the capacitor so another one is in the observation table uh, if you go for the observations here here r1 and c1 r1 and c uh, uh, R1 and R2 should be equal and C1 should be and C2 should be equal. So what will be the value of R1 and C1 is uh, those R1 and C1 values are 
47 kilo ohms and uh, our, um, this will be the uh, resistance which we need to take. So R1 and R2 that is nothing but uh, these both R, uh, R2 and R3 will be equal. These are the resistance which we are taking in order to find the frequency of oscillations. So the value of R1 and R2 will be 47 kilo ohms. And C1 and C2, the capacitor value will be 0.1 microfarad. So here, after substituting uh, the values of R1, uh, R1 is equal to R2 is equal to 47 kilo ohms, and C1 and C2 is equal to 0.1 microfarad. After substituting in the value, you will get the value as time period T is equal to. Uh, 6.486 millisecond. So th uh, that will be the time period of uh, um, the T, the overall time period T1 plus T2, where uh, 1.38 into R1 is nothing but uh, you will say uh, 47 kilo ohms. C, uh, C is nothing but C1 is equal to C2, that is 0.1 microfarad. After substituting, you will get the value 6.486 uh, millisecond. So you can substitute, you can multiply with 1.38. And you can get the frequency of oscillations that is equal to F. Right? So this is the stable multivibrator uh, observations and where you need to find out the frequency of oscillations. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.